Oh boy. You already know I had to talk about it, right? Tesla here reported earnings and is up. That's right, eight and a half percent after hours to eight seventy a share, right around there. After being up four percent today in the normal trading session, so you know my history with Tesla for sure. I'm excited to see um, <laughs> what's going on here. We'll take a look at these earnings and why is this stock popping so much? So naturally, the whole market rose off of hope of uh, a potential drug treatment for. Um, what is going on right now? So, <clears throat> ignore these garbage comments here. You know, sometimes you gotta look at them. But wow, we! You look at the headlines and you're thinking, what the crap is going on? Tesla beats by a dollar forty-five. Okay, the headlines misleading. Some might call it fake news. Um, Tesla beats on a non-gap standpoint by a dollar forty-five. Um, and beats on a gap perspective by $1.75. So they were expecting negative earnings. Um, now, I want to mention here the reason why you actually see a positive number here on that EPS line is 100% because of some credits that they received. So they actually would have posted a loss, um, but it just so happened that they had, they had received some cash each, and that ended up bringing them to a positive on in terms of this. So... Um, all things considered, I mean, you can still you can give them credit for it. That's fair. I think it's fine to give them credit for it because, especially on this revenue line, um, up thirty two percent year over year, beats by one hundred forty million. You can't, I mean, you can't deny it. You can't deny how good that is. So, um, that's very quality. So, Tesla has produced one hundred two thousand uh, vehicles in and delivered eighty eight thousand five hundred vehicles to market's best quarter one ever. Uh, gross margin came in at 25.5%, which is the highest they've ever seen, uh, versus 22.5 in Q4 and 20.2 a year ago. So those numbers are massive, obviously, you can see. Even if you consider the fact that their EPS is definitely inflated, but regardless, you see those numbers are massive, especially with everything going on. Um, you see other automakers absolutely getting hammered right now. And then Tesla comes here and says, all right, I'm just going to smack you the face, right? So... Um, <clears throat> margins topped expectations with auto margins at 25.5. Consensus um, was 17.5. Uh, so that's wild. Operating cash flow uh, was actually ah, <clears throat> negative 895 million during the quarter. So they spent a lot of money. So the free cash flow went down nearly a billion dollars. Yikes! Due to inventory growth. Um, so pretty much they're they're producing a lot more is what they're describing this as. Um, so what does that mean? Does that mean they're producing too much? Uh, does that mean they're not selling enough? I mean, it, there's a lot of things to think about that in particular, that number there. Um, but regardless, you can tell they produced quite a bit um, and a little bit, little bit too much in terms of vehicles. So that is not a good line in terms of free cash flow, obviously, but... We'll take a look. Uh, keep looking at some of this data. <clears throat> Tesla says the Shanghai Gigafactory saw further volume growth, which resulted in a material improvement in margins of locally made Model 3 vehicles. The EV automaker said that the Model Y contributed to profits, uh, which is the first time in history that a new product has been profitable in the first quarter. Ah, that's interesting. Uh, Model Y delivers uh, deliveries from Gigafactory are scheduled for 2021 is when they're planning on that. Wild stuff. Uh, Tesla isn't issuing any near-term guidance due to the pandemic. Uh, while near-term profit guidance uh, is currently on hold, we believe we will achieve industry-leading operating margins and profitability with capacity expansion and localization plans underway. So, in all honesty here, my opinion of the matter, I think that naturally, and you'll see it with every, pretty much every company, um, Q2 is going to be a horrific quarter, right? Um it's going to be bad, and that's why they don't want to give guidance for it. We just don't know how bad it's going to be. So, uh, regardless, I mean, good. it's a good quarter for Tesla. What can I say? It's a good quarter for them. Um, we look at these in-depth slides now. We'll take a look here. Um, so, cash. From a cash perspective, $1.8 billion uh, increase in the cash and cash equivalents. Uh, to a total right now of $8.1 billion. And again, this is a company that's raised a lot of money, so they do have a lot of debt, for sure. We'll take a look at that balance sheet later. Um, but they have $8 billion in cash on hand, so you shouldn't be worried right now about them going out of business because, you know what, they've got cash. They can fund it. Uh, operating cash flow 
negative 895, um, of which 981 million due to growth in inventory. So, uh, so they're saying you know over that that and more was due to um, inventory growth. Now, how you want to think about that is up to you. Um, in my opinion, I mean, if you think positively, they're just preparing for deliveries in the future. Maybe not everyone's able to give deliveries. You talk about workers, you know, walking out of work, stuff like that. Um, you know, right now there's a lot going on that can lead to that, so it's understandable. Profitability, um, $283 million gap operating income, which is 4.7% uh, operating margin. Uh, $16 million gap net income, so really not much money there. I mean, it's better than negative for sure. Uh, gross margin at the Giga Shanghai approaching levels of U.S. made Model 3. Wild. Um, for operations, the Model Y deliveries began significantly ahead of schedule. They increased the Model S range to 391 miles uh, with no increase in battery capacity. That's wild. Uh, very good. I mean, the, the technology this company has in terms of battery, they are just in, incredible. I mean, I mean, there's no doubt Tesla's at the the peak of all of this in terms of electric vehicles. Right now, they're the peak, and that's why you see the share price where it is. Um, they're the peak. I mean, they know they know everything about this. So they reached production of uh, 1,000 solar roofs in a single week. Now, I don't know if they'll measure in here, but solar was actually down on the quarter quite significantly, around 30-something percent. So um, something to consider uh, in terms of total usage. But we'll look at that. I don't know if they'll mention that in here. I assume they probably will at some point. But uh, you see automotive revenues here. Look at the... Look at the change you see here. Just positive stuff. Um, so versus quarter one last year, that was a 38% uh, increase. But quarter over quarter, and I mention this all the time, Q4 is always going to be bigger. So don't be shocked. They Some people throw in that quarter over quarter headline and be like, this is awful, 90% down. But no, not at all. Um, nothing bad at all. So And again, you do see from regulatory credits here, uh, quite a bit more of regulatory credits that adds a decent bit to their money. You know what I'm saying? A lot of bit to their money. Uh, if you're looking from a, a gross margin perspective, though, just or gross profit, just good. I mean, it's a good increase, 75% year over year. That's massive. Um, and only a 9% decrease quarter over quarter when their revenue only decreased 19 or did decrease 19%. So they had a growth in terms of, uh, if you want to consider it that way, growth in terms of margin there. So very good for them. Um, Definitely like to see it. Total revenues uh, up 32% year over year. Um, and uh, if you look at gross profit, total was actually up 118% year over year. So massive stuff. You know, quarter over quarter, I don't even compare that at this point. It's not necessarily worth it for most companies um, that are a little bit more cyclical. So, um, yeah, uh, net loss perspective, which obviously... Uh, we like to look at that um, adjusted uh, EBITDA. We like looking at that. Um, you see overall significant increase um, year over year, but they had a really bad quarter one. And you see the stories unfolding for this company in terms of profitability. You know they're they're getting there. This free cash flow line is obviously ugly. Um, there's no doubt about it. That's an ugly free cash flow line. Com or, uh, corporate expenditures up pretty big. Um, you you don't like uh, you don't like looking at this necessarily, but the cash and cash equivalents portion of it is increasing quite significantly, 268 percent year over year. Uh, again, that was a lot of it was capital raised, so that's one thing to consider. Um, cash, we kind of talked about that already, so we can kind of skip that. We'll look at some of the specific models here uh, from the S and X production. Uh, <clears throat> really, production isn't what I care about too too much. Um, all things considered, uh, if you look at this quarter, actually, production is not like a, it's not a massive, massive change. So that big change in inventory kind of makes you wonder what's going on. Why aren't they delivering the vehicles they're producing? But we think positive here, okay? Um, the Model S and X deliveries, that's what we care about. We care about vehicle deliveries. So uh, overall, from a deliveries perspective on the Model S, they only increased 1%. So uh, it seems they've relatively reached their market with the Model S, uh, and the more onto the Model 3 and Model Y. Of course, these are the more uh, popular vehicles for them right now. The newer ones, more popular. 50% uh, increase year over year, or year over year in terms of that. So massive 76,000, um, 
for 76 million deliveries. That's that's very big. A lot of vehicles being sold there. So um, definitely like to see that solar deployment. They did mention it here. So if you look at solar deployment, actually down 26 percent year over year. My apologies. Um, so from a storage deployment perspective. Definitely down, um, quarter over quarter down 35. So I, again, I, I read the wrong headline. I'm sorry, but year over year down 26 uh, percent. The solar business isn't, I mean, it's not what this company's after for the most part. It's just another facet of the business. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> from a uh, stores and service locations and mobile service fleet, we're talking about um, people giving service on the road. If you need service on your Tesla, stuff like that. Um, growth there you see on the year over year line, uh, pretty nice there. And from supercharging stations up 29% year over year and 33% uh, year over year from connectors as well. So good increase in terms of that as well. Um, from the vehicle capacity perspective, um, <clears throat> we don't necessarily know obviously on the Shanghai Berlin um, and the, what they're calling the United States in terms of the semi, the roadster, and the cyber truck, because they're all in development, so we don't know on that um, necessarily. So uh, we see caps in terms of Shanghai of 200,000 uh, Model 3s. We'll see what that looks like. Um, from an autopilot, they enabled stop sign and traffic light recognition and braking uh, for the early access program users at the end of quarter one and to wider public in April 2020, which is right now. What? Um, I don't know if you knew that, but yeah. Uh, as we've done with previous releases of major new features, drivers will be required to confirm their attention um, in order to continue. <clears throat> Once enough real-world data is collected, systems will become more capable, and our vehicles will continue to drive through intersections without a confirmation. So that makes plenty of sense. So pretty much their screen is going to be, I mean, it will ask you, and you will have to confirm that, hey, this light's green, this light's red. Um, definitely a thing to consider. At some point, their technology, I mean, this is a company that's so intelligent with this this technology development that it'll get to a point where the artificial intelligence will know exactly what to do in this situation and you won't have to be hands-on with it it's pretty exciting so um i don't know i just think it's it's crazy stuff uh, among uh, many other security and functionality we launched dash cam viewer uh, many customers have been requesting the possibility to view footage recorded by autopilot cameras directly on the car screen with the, the latest software update our users can now uh, view the sentry mode videos from all four angles, front, back, left, right, uh, left, and right cameras. That way, Tesla owners know the right away, uh, know right away if the sentry mode recording requires further attention. Pretty exciting stuff, actually, if you think about that. So, um, that's that's actually really cool um, in terms of software. There, a lot of stuff going on. Energy business, I don't care too too much about their energy business, um, nor their solar roof. I mean, solar business. You know, it's not necessarily something I'm super excited about. You know, Outlook, um, obviously they're not going to give any much Outlook here. So they say it's currently on hold pretty much for everything here. Um, you see pictures of the Shanghai Gigafactory. Um, right here is the main building there. They're furthering development. They're zooming through this thing. Um, look at this. Shanghai Gigafactory, baby. Look at this thing get built. Look at the inside. Um it's crazy. I mean, this is a massive, massive factory. Pretty cool. Uh, very, very cool. So, uh, what else do we have? Obviously, uh, they're simpli simplifying the structure of the vehicle. Pretty cool stuff there. Um, two pieces of metal as opposed to 70 pieces of metal. Definitely pretty cool. Um, key metrics from quarterly. You see this? Vehicle deliveries. Um, and this is where you can see the growth story for Tesla. That's pretty exciting. Look at that growth in vehicle deliveries. Just a consistent growth. I mean, it's been solid, solid stuff for them um, overall. You see kind of a level off here um, as you get to the 2018 through right now. Kind of a level off. But again, they have more vehicles coming out. So they, they have the chance to increase that. The operating cash flow and free cash flow perspective, it's just all over the board. I mean, it's hard to really get any metric of what's going on with this you see positive growth and then two quarter ones in a row are just horrific i mean it's hard to say necessarily and from a net income line you really have no read on this at all i mean it, it doesn't look good 
I'll tell you that. Um, even this net income line for this quarter, not good, um, all things considered. So <clears throat> really no read in terms of profitability. I know they said they want to be profitable by the end of the year. I think this will delay them um, another year in terms of this pandemic. I think they will get delayed. So that's something to consider. From a trailing 12-month perspective, though, you can see this vehicle delivery aspect looking good. Um, operating in free cash flow shows positive growth. And net income line, I I don't mm, I don't know if I can say it shows positive growth, but it shows something, right? It definitely shows something here. That is, in fact, a chart, uh, in case you were curious. So I just wanted to make sure you knew. Let's look at that balance sheet, and we'll take a look at this. Um, so obviously you see this cash position just continue to grow. Total assets continues to grow as well. So <clears throat> we compare that 37 uh, billion dollars to obviously we like to look at the total liabilities line which is right here total liabilities of 26 million or 26 billion I should say so right now their assets do outweigh their um, total liabilities and I like that I'm pretty excited about that um, yeah that's that's just really exciting stuff going on and obviously they have debt to pay over time no doubt about it um, so total debt uh, eventually coming. Obviously, you hear you see this 8.3 billion dollars here, which kind of levels out that um, total assets perspective. But again, assets higher than li liabilities. That is what I would call good. So if we're talking about Tesla stock, I mean a lot of people are going to be talking about this thing. Again, I just don't know. I understand why we're at this valuation point, but this is a company that had a even after getting all these credits, a gap EPS of nine cents. And we're talking a first off a non existent PE ratio. Forward P ratio in the, you know, upwards of eight hundred range. Um, I mean, it just makes you think. I don't know where the valuation necessarily is for this company. Um, I think it's absurd for sure. And I don't think that's insane to say. Uh, I don't know what I want to think about this company. I really don't. I see where the growth story is coming, but I don't want to get involved with this company because of the fact that uh, I I just don't know where the stock goes from here. I mean, valuation is absurd, and what happens when others get involved in the in the auto, autonomous vehicle game? And Tesla isn't the only one producing them. What happens then? I mean, when they start losing market share or having to share market share, they obviously won't be the number one all the time. It's just a fact. I mean, they're number one right now because they're the ones producing it. But when other big name companies also start doing it and they start producing good vehicles, I don't know necessarily where the share value goes because it can't be trading on this valuation if others are going to be involved in the game. It just can't. Um, I don't know. I just don't know what to think about Tesla stock, but I did hope you enjoyed. So hope you enjoyed.